We thank you for joining us today for our Doc Talk Live. Today we have Dr. James Cariocides, a hand, wrist, and elbow surgeon with Riverside Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialists, and he's going to talk about two common hand conditions. Welcome, Dr. Cariocides. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me today. My name is James Cariocides. I've been with Riverside for about one year. I'm seeing patients in Newport News and in Williamsburg, both as in uh, the outpatient clinic setting and for surgeries. Uh, so I treat many acute injuries and chronic conditions from the fingertips to the elbow for patients of uh, all ages, uh, essentially folk with a focus on adolescence uh, through the elderly. The list of acute injuries that I see are, are many. So I see severe injuries such as flexor tendon lacerations, extensor tendon lacerations that allow you to move your fingers and your hand. Also nerve injuries that give you feeling and also give your muscles the signal that they need to work. Broken bones from the fingertips to the elbow. I also treat many chronic conditions that affect people as they age, such as arthritis in the form of wear and tear arthritis, inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis of the joints of the hand, wrists, and elbow. I also treat other common chronic conditions such as carpal tunnel syndrome, cubital tunnel syndrome of the elbow, trigger fingers, and finger contractures. Finger contractures from what's called Dupuytren's disease, which is shown here in the middle. Uh, so it's, these are some of the pictures I have from surgeries. Uh, that I treat every week. So broken bones of the wrist, such as seen here. I also treat rarer problems such as tumors of the hand, such as seen here, and tumors that affect the bones of the hand. All right, so the conditions that I will talk about today include a common problem called thumb arthritis or basal joint arthritis, such as seen on the bottom left of your screen, and the finger contractures from Dupuytren's disease. So these common conditions are referred to as CMC arthritis or carpal metacarpal arthritis affecting the thumb. This is a wear and tear pattern of arthritis called osteoarthritis, which is the loss of cartilage in a joint as we age. Dupuytren's disease or otherwise referred to as Dupuytren's contractures is a condition that forms nodules in the hand which grow in the palm and can then grow into the fingers, bringing the fingers down into the palm. You can imagine that these contractures of the fingers can interfere with your ability to wash your hands, to put your fingers in your pockets, to grip objects. So both of these conditions that patients see me for commonly interfere with their daily life. So I'll focus on CMC arthritis. This is otherwise known as thumb arthritis. This is the most common uh, arthritis affecting joints of the upper extremity, so from the finger to the shoulder, that ultimately requires surgery in any form. It's a very common condition. So it's uh, many studies have looked at this and one study found that in patients greater than 75 years of age, a quarter of men are affected and 40% of women. Another study have found though, despite the common uh, commonality of this condition on X-ray, very common, only about 2% of patients older than age 60 and 4% of patients older than age 70 are symptomatic from this arthritis. So a lot of folks have it present on x-ray, but then don't end up having symptoms so bad that they come in to see a doctor. So the CMC joint is a very unique joint. It is referred to as the saddle joint uh, due to the, the fact that both sides of the joint on e either bone uh, being, are relatively incongruent. So they allow motion in multiple planes. So movements of the thumb CMC joint include opposition, or bringing your pinky to your thumb retropulsion, palmar abduction, and adduction. So this allows complex movements that we use in everyday life as humans, such as precision grip, pinch grip, and grip strength, like gripping a screwdriver, such as the pictures here. So due to the relative incongruity of the two ends of the joint, that's not a good match. Um, several ligaments play a very important role in maintaining the stability of that joint. One of the ligaments in particular that we call the palmar uh, ligament palmar oblique ligament. Uh, the degree of damage to this ligament corresponds with the degree of damage that we see on x-rays. 
So the diagnosis for thumb arthritis is based on physical exam and can be graded and followed with x-rays. Symptoms can range from occasional aching of the base of the thumb with grip to a severe pain that makes it very difficult to hold objects. The picture on the right here that you see, uh, we call this the shoulder sign. So due to the change in the bones, you can see the base of the metacarpal, which is this bone here, uh, pooching out a little bit in the hand, which we call the shoulder sign. And this can progress so much that a patient develops what's called a Z-deformity. And this is when the metacarpal becomes flexed in what we call adduction. So the metacarpal is um, pointing towards the index finger. And then you see a hyperextension of the MCP joint, forming what we call this Z-deformity. X-rays can vary, as you can imagine, quite a bit for this condition. On the left is stage one, uh, as far as an X-ray classification of thumb arthritis. There aren't many changes on the x-ray. You actually can see widening of this joint and that's due to inflammation of the joint. As you progress from stage one to stage two, three, and four, you see increase in size of the bone spurs that we call osteophytes of the joint. You see cysts form at the base of the joint. You can even see the thumb metacarpal called the first metacarpal start to dislocate uh, partially, which is called subluxation of the joint. The important thing about x-rays of thumb arthritis is that as it has been shown time and time again that X-ray findings of thumb arthritis do not necessarily correlate with the pain that a patient experiences. Some patients with mild x-rays have very severe pain, while other patients with significant x-ray findings of this arthritis do not have much pain or it's very well controlled. Arthritis uh, at the base of the thumb only ultimately requires surgery about 25% of the time. So three quarters of patients are able to manage this difficult problem with other treatments before jumping to surgery. So I see patients every day um, with arthritis that doesn't necessarily need surgery. And we try a very, um, a various techniques. So there are braces designed for this problem that help different patients. So two of them are shown here. The middle brace we call the CMC restriction brace or the comfort pool brace made by that company. It provides some compression, but also allows a functional amount of motion of the hand and the thumb. Uh, paraffin wax can be very helpful. It's a form of moist heat for hand arthritis. Voltaren gel shown here, the, a picture recently went over the counter and that helps a lot of people with hand arthritis pains and it's very affordable. Lastly, as far as non-operative treatment, injections into the base of the thumb CMC joint can bring months of relief. I've even had patients have relief for one to two years from an injection. So that's something that we commonly do in hand surgery. In advanced CMC arthritis that ultimately undergoes surgery, the most important step for surgery is actually removing the entire bone called the trapezium, which is highlighted here for you in this diagram. That relieves the arthritis here. There are multiple techniques after removing the trapezium to stabilize that joint. This takes some time. So the surgery reserved for patients who really need it is a two to three month recovery period. There are many variations to stabilizing the first metacarpal back over to the second metacarpal involving using your own tendons, involving using hardware such as that first slide which showed up, uh, one of my surgeries that we use an instrument called the tightrope. So I've adapted uh, variations of this surgery for patients with different uh, situations and, and possibly needs after the surgery. All right, so moving forward with uh, Dupuytren's disease. Dupuytren's disease uh, has a cause that is unknown. So there are multiple uh, potentially contributing factors that have been associated with this condition. This formation of nodules, pits, uh, masses, lumps in the palm uh, can then progress into the fingers. So this diagram here simplifies the picture uh, grading Dupuytren's disease from one to three uh, with one just in the palm without any finger contracture, just a swelling like our patient here with the picture on the left. The cord can grow up the, the palm and into the finger, causing what's called an MCP joint contracture, which is seen on the picture on the right. As this progresses, it can curl the finger down into the palm. But Dupuytren's disease is more commonly seen in men uh, with a ratio of seven to one. This uh, difference between the two genders does decrease as we age. It's uh, much more common in patients over age 50. There are multiple potential causes of this condition. It was, uh, it's nicknamed Viking's disease due to the belief that it originated in Scandinavia and then spread amongst people, um, so with a genetic component through Northern Europe and then to various countries after that time. Uh, so two other very common factors associated with Dupuytren's disease are heavy smoking and diabetes. 
these are not direct causes of this condition, but there are associations that have been supported from a lot of uh, research. Other causes um, that are thought to contribute to developing this disease are listed here. So excessive alcohol use, HIV, epilepsy, or the medications for epilepsy, and manual labor. Interestingly, while it has been thought that some, some jobs that involve high vibration activities contribute to this condition, there's been no clear evidence that uh, links that as a cause, but it is an association. So Dupuytren's diathesis is what uh, we use to term uh, patients that have extra findings that um, have been shown to have a high recurrence rate of Dupuytren's disease. So if surgery is undertaken, that there's a high chance of it coming back or um, progression of the disease. If one has a small contracture of the fingers that it might contract the finger down into the palm. So factors that predispose one to Dupuytren's diathesis include uh, involvement of both hands, both palms have the condition, younger age at onset, such as age, such as age 40 or younger, a family history, a mother or a sibling with this condition, or extra findings of, of this uh, disease around the body, such as shown here, these dorsal knuckle pads, or this condition of the nodules at the sole of the foot. So the big thing about treatment for Dupuytren's disease is that it should only be undertaken if the symptoms are dramatically interfering with one's daily life. A lot of folks, the majority of folks, have the nodules, but no contracture of the fingers. And these folks, surgery, including minimally invasive surgery, is not very successful. And the scar formation after surgery can actually lead to a finger contracture worse than the initial finger contracture. So we reserve treatment for um, patients that have typically um, contracture of what's called the MCP joint of 30 degrees or more, or a PIP, which is this next joint up, curling the finger down of 20 degrees or more if it's an interfering with the patient's daily life. Minimally invasive treatments can be very successful. So that includes using a, a needle here as a scalpel to cut that cord. This can be done with the patient under sedation in the surgery center or less sedated with local anesthesia only. Another treatment minimally invasive is called Zyaflex or collagenase. This is an enzyme injection that is injected into the cord. This is done in two phases. After the enzyme injection, one to three days later, the patient comes back, typically in the office setting, and, and we pop the cord. And lastly, for some um, Dupuytren's contractures that are more significant or due to other patient factors, you do a more thorough surgery where you actually excise and remove the Dupuytren's disease. There are pros and cons of those treatments, which also lend to um, you know, certain complications that are higher with one uh, than the other. So with any disease or with any treatment of Dupuytren's, there is a lifetime recurrence risk. That's the biggest, the biggest risk with proceeding with intervention I would tell you about. It's about a 10% risk per year, and some experts say that it's 100% if you live long enough. Other conditions that are common include temporary uh, blood uh, collection or blood clot called a hematoma, uh, temporary numbness around the incision if you pursue the surgical route with a, a surgical incision, and these other conditions listed here. After surgery, in order to prevent recurrence, we do a three to four months of bracing with sleep, so that's shown here in the bottom picture. The certified hand therapist that I work with will make you a custom splint to be worn with sleep to help prevent that recurrence as best we can. Well, um, I think that's all I would uh, talk about today during our 15 minute uh, session. I hope I gave you some extra information you didn't know about CMC arthritis and Dupuytren's disease. I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kariakides. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is, at what point should I realize what symptoms should I notice that I may have a problem and I should make an appointment with you? Uh, for either of these conditions? Either condition, correct. I would say for both of these and really a lot of ailments that affect uh, one's hands, if it's interfering with your daily life, most people, uh, kind of joke that patients come to see you, one, if they're losing sleep, of course, and number two, if they can't play golf anymore. Uh, so if, you know, in all uh, seriousness, if any condition is interfering with your ability to do your hobbies, perform your job, or get the sleep that you need, that's when it's definitely time to come in to be evaluated. 
Okay, great. Thank you for that. Uh, our second question, uh, we have somebody who asked, if uh, are you specially trained in this area of hand and wrist surgery? That's correct. Uh, so orthopedic surgery was my initial training, and then I did extra training, so a, a fellowship in hand. It's actually finger to shoulder surgery, uh, with now I'm focusing uh, due to interest here and in how we can best serve our patients at Riverside, finger to elbow. Uh, so it is extra training. You can get to hand and wrist surgery through orthopedic surgery or plastic surgery. So you'll have um, people who go either route. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, how long of a recovery period can I expect based on the two different procedures? Uh, and what kind of help will I need during my recovery? Um, Neil, are we talking about the arthritis one or the uh, Dupuytrens? Uh, they didn't specify, so maybe we could we'll answer both. both. Sure. Excellent. The um, Dupuytrens surgery can vary quite a bit. So that's the surgery for the contractures in the hand. The minimally invasive surgery options are a very uh, quick fix. It's really an office space procedure. So in those patients, the recovery uh, may be a few days from the initial procedure. Some patients will have some, some unexpected issues come up from that. The enzyme dissolves the cord. It can also dissolve some of the small veins. So you can see some bruising that can be tender and something to deal with. Um, if you have a significant contracture that is then uh, acutely corrected, that can lead to a tear in the skin if the skin has been in the one position for a long time. Those tears generally heal very well just with dressing changes and some uh, monitoring by our team. Uh, however, that person's gonna have a little bit of a longer recovery than someone who just had the injection and no, no issues. So uh, the healing from the minimally invasive surgery uh, options for Dupuytrens, very quick. A few days, you'll be back to what you wanna do with the caveat that we have you wear that nocturnal, that brace with sleep to help prevent recurrence. The bigger surgery option with the incisions, however, that's going to be two, three weeks before you're getting back to doing your hobbies, doing your work, doing anything around the house, yard work or, or errands uh, with that hand. The skin of the palm and the finger, they need a little bit more time to heal before you can start putting weight and back through your finger and your hand. Um, now, as far as thumb arthritis, that's a bigger surgery. We're removing a bone, reconstructing the position that that uh, first metacarpal sits that's at the base of your thumb where the arthritis happens. So that's a two to three month recovery with about four to six weeks of that time in a cast you can't take off. Okay, great, thank you. And we have one more question regarding the thumb arthritis surgery. Uh, are there risks associated with that procedure? Sure, uh, anytime we, uh, you see a surgeon, there's gonna be risks of the uh, treatment that you have, but infection is about the same with any surgery we do. So we do everything we can with modern medicine to keep that risk as low as possible, sterile equipment and antibiotics. Other risks of that surgery um, in particular, some temporary hypersensitivity of the skin around the incision. There's a very sensitive nerve branch there that um, identify and protect throughout the procedure. Uh, stiffness, if uh, depending on which technique we use to stabilize that joint, some patients get stiff. So it's a battle between providing protection to stabilize the surgery that was done to give you long-term stability, but then getting you moving pretty quickly so that you don't get stiff in your fingers. So stiffness is a problem with that surgery as well. Um, those would be, the, I think, the main things I would mention to you about that surgery. All right, great. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Kariakides, for joining us today. And thanks to all our viewers for joining us as well. Uh, we do encourage you to visit the Riverside Health System Facebook page for upcoming Doc Talk Live presentations. Uh, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you.